like to call to order the uh, Township Council meeting for Wednesday, November 6th. If we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance First item of the agenda is uh, bittersweet for all of us in Concord Township. Uh, on October 6th, we lost a valued member and colleague um, of the staff here at Concord Township, Mary Lou Warland, uh, who passed away. Uh, I remember Mary Lou when we were in the old building. I think um, Mano and who else is here from that? Fred and probably Maureen from back in those days. There's Maureen. I put my glasses on, didn't know where she was. But uh, Debbie, yeah, De I don't know if Debbie was in the old building with us. You are? Wow, Deb. We're, we're, you were, we're all getting old. <laughs> okay, anyway. I knew I shouldn't have gone down that path because I was going to forget somebody. So it's going to be hell to pay tomorrow. But anyway, uh, I'm going to read this uh, certificate of recognition. Whereas Concord Township and the Concord Township staff family lost a valued member and colleague on October 6, 2024, with the passing of Mary Lou Warland. Whereas Mary Lou Warland served 20 years as a township receptionist and was the smile that greeted you when you first entered the township municipal office. Whereas Mary Lou was the driving force and organization behind the Senior Expo for 18 years, in addition to the many office duties and tasks she took on. Whereas Mary Lou will be remembered for her love of faith, family, and friends, her dedication to plants, remembering birthdays, office decorations, predictions of activities by the phases of the moon, and numerous interactions with Concord Township residents. Whereas her kindness and graciousness has enriched those fortunate enough to know and work with her. Therefore be it resolved that the Concord Township Council and staff recognize the significant contributions of Mary Lou Warland over the course of her career and extend their sincere condolences to her family and friends, especially her beloved daughter, Erica, granddaughter, Ariella. We will always remember her dedication and positive influence on our staff in township. If I could kindly ask just for a moment of silence while we remember our memories or share our memories in our own mind and with those around us of Mary Lou and the dedication to the township. Anyway, I don't know if we need a motion for this, but I'm sure I'll have a fight for people to motion and a fight for a second. I'll just say this is unanimous on behalf of the uh, Concord Township elected officials and all the people here in Concord Township and the residents who had the uh, chance of uh, meeting um, Mary Lou and working with her. Uh, do we have anybody from the family here, Amanda? We do. We have yes. the daughter Erica and her siblings and extended family members who are all here in the well, back we, we, and our we, staff. We are sorry for your loss. She was a great lady. She will be surely missed. And um, we, we will miss her, too. You will miss her. We'll all miss her. Um, why don't we hand this to Erica? And okay. then if the family wants to come up and staff, we can do a big picture. Is that, that okay with the council? Good. Is that okay? Well, you said it. I guess it's okay. Go ahead.
Now, I would like to say a few words about Mary Lou before you, before you leave. Uh, it was my idea way back when, after I went to a senior expo from one of our state legislators, that we could have one here in Concord Township. So I went to our township manager with Bob Willard at the time, and I said, Bob, I would like to do a senior expo. Well, what, do, what do you want to do? I said, well, this is what we need to do, and I, we need to order all the materials and supplies, contact possible vendors, et cetera, et cetera. He said, okay, let me get Mary Lou in here, and we'll, we'll talk about it. So that first year, we met probably six different times to go over and make sure everything was perfect. The next year, we might have met two or three times. The third year, maybe once. And after that, I never had to show up at all because Mary Lou did it all. She was, br she was just brilliant. She did her job and it made everything happen and come together. I was so sad this year when she wasn't there. And uh, I think we all shed a tear that day, but uh, the beautiful woman, beautiful family, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Move, moving on with the agenda. You're welcome. Uh, second item is an LSA grant award, a post aeration protective cover for $300,000. Uh, Amanda, you want to give us a little background or just a little Cliff Notes version of what this $300,000 is going to be used for? Yep. So this is for an important process in our sewer uh, treatment. And it is a post duration protective cover. Uh, we received $300,000 through the LSA um, portion, uh, uh, LSA grant, um, local share account grant. Um, and basically what this will do is put um, a covering or a building over top of that portion of the treatment. And it allows for safe and efficient operation. It basically, there is algae that forms in that tank. And the algae takes the oxygen from the water and causes um, equipment issues. So this actually protects our equipment and the safety of our employees um, by you know, lessening that solidity in the water. Okay, and it is a grant, so it's free money, right? Uh, yep, okay. that one has that, no match. That makes it better yet, thank you. Uh, upcoming meeting is an events. November 9th, Veterans Day Dance Party at the BYC Gym, 7 to 10 p.m. November 10th, Conco Hero Memorial Veterans Day Ceremony at 1 p.m. November 14th, the Park and Recreation Board meeting. Uh, the Historical Commission meeting this month will be canceled. November 18th, the Planning Commission meeting. November 19th, the conditional use hearing for the target trailer use at 6.15 p.m. Also the same evening, the ordinance hearing for the 2025 budget at 7 p.m. November 20th, Township Leaf Pickup Day for those registered. I guess you register on the website, is that correct? Um, Pick up? No, it, you do it through the office. Do it through the office. It's okay. on the website, though. It tells them what to do. Okay, so they go on the website and they'll tell them what, okay. November 20th, Zoning Hearing Board. November 26th, Council Agenda Meeting, if needed. November 28th, Thanksgiving Day, Township Holiday. Offices are closed as well as on the 29th. Under Reports, Public Safety, Vanita. Thank you, Mr. President. Today we have a very short um, safety report. Uh, and uh, I do want to first thank you, uh, thank all the residents it's of yours. Concord Township for keeping this Concord Township safe because in response to extremely dry weather conditions, all open burning, including burning on uh, Saturday, November 2nd was suspended um, until further notice. So thank you each and every resident who have kept us uh, township safe. This was based on the National Drought Center notification. Last week, we also all had changed our time to fall back by an hour. This is a good time for of the year to change batteries and make sure your smoke alarms um, and carbon monoxide detectors uh, are working in order. That's all I have for today. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Open space, trails, and recreations. Mr. Cross. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as mentioned earlier, we had the Senior Expo um, a few weeks ago. We had over 90 vendors uh, at the BYC Fieldhouse, which was a great reception. Um, and the uh, Concord Township Historical Society sponsored a spooky night with an Edgar Allan Poe interpreter. Uh, over 40 guests uh, came out to hear him. We had the uh, 
pickleball social with pickleball uh, players, uh, which was successful, the fall harvest festival, uh, and a bird walk. Um, one thing to note um, is that on the 9th, uh, we will be having tree planting at the Township Park uh, from 9 to 11 a.m. and encourage folks to come out and participate. Great. Uh, sewer and Public Works, Mr. Gillespie. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, with regard to the uh, sewer operations, uh, two items I'd like to highlight. <clears throat> On October 24th, contractor did the startup for the new Robbins Way pump station, and also the necessary equipment has been in for the Concord Woods pump station emergency replacement. And the startup date for that is Octo oh, October 28th, so I guess it happened, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And regard to public works, a couple of items I'd like to highlight in addition to many, many things that our public works department does every month. At 40 Beaver Valley Road, the department completed a full demolition of a cinder block building on a soon to be neighborhood park location. And also tree work. Uh, tree work has been a focus in public works for the month of October. The staff removed over 40 dead trees and pruned many at the Smith Ridge Park and Bushville Farm. The work has created safety to recreation and buildings at both properties. End of my report. Okay, uh, building and code, Colleen is not here. We will enter her report into the record. Planning Commission, Larry. Uh, yes, Conquer Township Planning Commission activities for October. Uh, the Planning Commission agenda meeting was held on October 14th and the public meeting was also held on October 21st. Um, at that meeting, Valley Point Church sketch plan for outdoor improvements. Uh, the project manager and two representatives from the church, Dan Wright and Rich Kirk, came to the meeting to present the project and highlight some of the proposed features. Uh, Orchard Knoll final review application. Applicant came to the meeting to review the final plan. The plan has already been received uh, preliminary uh, uh, plan approval. The Planning Commission has recommended the Orchard Knoll final plan to Council for approval. Uh, also that evening, a conditional use application that we had a hearing on earlier this <coughs> evening for Sampkin 322 LLC. Um, that's on 830 Conchester Highway. The Planning Commission has issued comments to Council for the hearing that we had earlier this evening. Uh, Schedule for next month, as stated earlier, agenda meeting November 12th, and the public meeting will be on the 18th. That's all for planning. Thank you. Solicitor, Mr. Dunia. Pleased to report there are no new suits, no new litigation. I'm working with the township staff and bringing together the final co codification, working with the staff on the Smith Bridge Road roundabout project and the Octorora Trail. Thank you. Nate, township engineer. Sure, good evening. Uh, just a few brief updates. Spring Valley Road, um, we have the contractor replacing the culvert. Uh, this is our third attempt at that. Um, we are <laughs> optimistic we will be successful, and that will be detoured closed through Friday, and hopefully we will be done with that project. Uh, the Evergreen Drive project has started. Uh, that is uh, some improvements to the medians and the intersection at Marist Grove. Uh, that will be about two, three weeks, and we've been meeting with the various property owners, Brandolini, Marist Grove, uh, the community, the residential community, just coordinating, communicating. Uh, so again, two, three weeks, hopefully we'll wrap that one up before the holiday, kind of rush on Evergreen Drive. Today, uh, sorry, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but both traffic signals at Isaac Bullock went on flash, which means one week from today, they'll both be operational. Uh, we met with PennDOT today, we don't expect any issues, so a week from today, uh, those will be operational. We think that's gonna be a good safety improvement, um, and we will minimize you know, those stops it's going to be very limited for the side, side streets there. Uh, last, um, you guys had approved recently the Encompass site here next door at the old Concordville Hotel. Uh, we are winding down the agreements and documents for that process, and you will see construction starting on that uh, almost any day now. Thank you. Manager, Amanda. Um, I just wanted to put an extra point on the uh, November 19th ordinance hearing for the 2025 proposed budget, um, encouraging folks to come out and join um, and ask questions um, and provide any ideas. Um, additionally, I wanted to point out that the Concord Hero Memorial Veterans Day ceremony that's happening this weekend is their 20th year. Wow. Uh, so uh, that's the 20th year since that group formed and has been started. So I just wanted to point out that um, they're celebrating that moment as well. Thanks. It doesn't take long, 20 years, huh? 
Uh, citizen comment. Anyone with any comments for anything on the agenda or any issues regarding in the township? Now's the time we ask you to come forward and identify yourself. Seeing none, we will move right along. Uh, under business items, the first item is the consent agenda. Um, we have the approval in this of the council public meeting minutes of October 1st, 2024. The total expenditures for the month of $1,150,359.45, which is an October payroll of $318,336.85, current bills totaling $376,933.15, and sewer bills totaling $455,089.45. Uh, there's some payments to contractors in here, which is generating um, there's some of these numbers to be higher. John, you have some certificates of payment? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, certificate number one for McKenney Construction, the Robbins Way Pump Station sewer project for $68,311.80. Uh, certificate number three to AJM Electric, the Robbins Way Pump Station sewer department for $35,945.15. And certificate number one to more construction for Smithbridge Park improvements for $148,153.50. Also, we have a couple of financial releases. Uh, yes, we have a financial one, release. Uh, certificate number one to Lenar uh, OHB LLC sewer project for $113,922.21. And, uh, we also have an advertisement to bid for the Beaver Valley Neighborhood Park DCNR grant project. I think that was part of the work that was done by Public Works in demolishing the building. That's Correct. the same site? Yes. Also, John, I think we're awarding a bid tonight also. For the uh, sewer department for the UV light system, electric and in general construction. So let me see what we have here. Yes, that would be... Uh, the award to A.J. Jurek for the general portion of the project for $644,000 and the award to A.J.M. Electric for the electrical portion for $96,208. Okay. And we also have a couple plans to accept this complete for filing. Celebrate preliminary, preliminary final land development 264 Baltimore Pike. This is the office building on Baltimore Pike across from the cemetery. Uh, that's been empty for a number of years. There's a daycare center that wants to use it, and they want to modify the parking lots to allow for a, a playground for the children. And the other is Penswood Winery preliminary final plan. Um, they are going to be rebuilding the barn and adding a retaining wall, and that also requires a land development. Do we have a motion to approve all the items on the consent agenda? I so move. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, AARP... Um, Project update, Nate, Amanda, what do we have? Uh, you mean ARPA? Oh, you said AARP. No, that's the old people, AARP. You got something that you're well, thinking about. I'm there now, baby. Thinking about something personally. Uh, I'm so, there. Uh, ARPA projects, I think we covered everything sort of earlier. Um, okay. We're in the middle of, uh, hopefully in December, we will be awarding the Newland Carter Way uh, stream restoration project based in retrofit there. Go ahead. Nate, you're giving me a bid. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, the, the, the Evergreen. Well, it's always good when you're managing yeah. your engineer. Great, right? Yeah, yeah. obviously, well, look, we're doing the Evergreen construction right now, which is one of the ARPA projects. We've closed out several. The Newland um, stream restoration, Carterway stream restoration, Newland based on the next two up. We're hoping to get numbers in before the end of the year to help with budgeting and, and ARPA math and things of that nature. So those are kind of the next two up, uh, and we're, we're kind of going through that design process right now. So I see a lot of emails from uh, PSATs, the Pennsylvania State Association of Township Supervisors, regarding spending of the ARPA funds, and uh, we don't want to give any money back, so uh, are, are we sure that we're going to spend every dollar that we got? Yeah, so we did have some projects that came into bid under budget. So actually what municipalities are being um, directed to do, you actually have a memo in front of you from uh, Bill. Uh, that outlines the game plan. So you have to, you take that as revenue replacement funds into your capital fund. So that is what we're doing. So we are completely fine for those projects. One of the projects was estimated at $400,000 and came in about $70,000 because we were able to get the emergency permit process for that Andrean wall project. Great. Um, so. So I'm looking, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven projects. Six of them are either done or 
being constructed as we speak, and one of them, I think you reported, we're having a free bid meeting shortly. Yep. So, okay, all good. Uh, Octorera Trail update. Dynamic duo, what do you got over here? Well, um, today we actually had a meeting, uh, Hugh and myself um, and uh, Pannoni, uh, regarding uh, SEPTA and a legal agreement uh, to use the trail. Um, so we're working through that language. Um, I had lots of questions today, and we're working through all of that. We hope to hear back from SEPTA in another week. Um, and then from there, we have a process for their right of entry. Um, so we're basically in agreements. We're just covering and fine-tuning the language is what it boils down to. Um, and then once that's done, we have to go through more processes, obviously, with SEPTA. It's pretty tedious, but we're working through it, and we'll make sure we get it done. Okay, great. Uh, item number four. You, I think I'm going to hand this over to you. Apparently, Acme uh, Markets, which now sells beer and wine and other um, alcoholic beverages, the state has revised the laws as to what they can carry, and they want to expand the line to be in conformance with state law. Is that pretty much it in a nutshell? Correct. So this involves the Acme Market store at 101 Byers Drive in Glen Mills, and the subject is the sale of ready-to-drink cocktails. So if you'll recall, uh, Council, that in October of 2014, the township, pursuant to a resolution, which was 43 of 2014, granted Acme Market Store permission to enter into a conditional license agreement with the Pennsylvania LCB to sell beer and wine in the township, which they have been doing on a regular basis. Effective September 16th of 2024, the Pennsylvania LCB amended their regulations to also allow the retail businesses such as Acme Markets uh, to sell ready-to-drink cocktails, RTDC. However, in order to do so, the Pennsylvania LCB is aware of our prior resolution and is requiring uh, ACME to have us recognize and acknowledge and permit their sale of ready-to-drink cocktails. Um, so it's legally permissible. Their license is in good standing. So this board, I think, has two options. You could uh, require a ACME to come in and uh, set forth, uh, and we can undergo another conditional use hearing and spend the time and expense. However, I would think that you also could do this administratively, and by that I mean simply pass a motion granting the township manager the authority uh, to contact the LCB in writing assuming the ACME's license is in good standing and permit and tell the LCB that yes, we, we are aware of it and we have no objection to their sell, selling the ready to drink cocktails. But it's your call. And as far as we know, there are no violations or anything that we're aware of with ACME with the license as it sits right now, correct? That, that's correct. And, and I think what you would do in the motion is require ACME to so, so state, but to our knowledge, there are no license problems. To my knowledge, we've had no run-ins with ACME with respect to their license, so it's just really an administrative matter. I personally would be okay with doing it that way. I don't see the reason to take the time of the council and ourselves and our uh, put on a bring a court reporter in and do everything like that if the state is saying it's okay, but I'd like to get everyone else's thoughts to see if they're okay just handling it administratively. It, it, it's okay with me. I'm just concerned that uh, other other venues will come in and request the same thing. So we need to bring that in front of the, the public each time. Uh, or can we? Uh, Wegmans or uh, uh, some, so, uh, some of the other stores. Uh, I, I would think if the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is requesting some sort of acknowledgement from the municipality, yeah, I think we would get a letter similar to this from Wegmans okay. or whoever saying, hey, I want to do this. We're allowed to do it. Can we do it? And you're correct, John. I assume that as soon as we do this, uh, Wawa will be following soon. Wa yeah, Wawa would be Wawa's the same a good thing. one, too. Yeah. Do we not want to then just, uh, if we're handling it administratively, sort of make an administrative, move an administrative policy that any applicant should submit the letter, note they're in good standing, et cetera, and, and we'll do that as opposed to one off, do, doing them one at a time? I, I would just assume doing one at a time in case there yeah. is a problem with one of them, John. So, Yui, do we need a motion for that? Larry, you, you got do. any thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine with it as it okay, is. Okay, Benita? As, as long as it's just current business. It's yes. not new. Yes. 
Yeah, I'm well, fine with it as long as John? there's no violation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do we need a motion on this? You do. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that the township manager have the authority uh, to contact the LCB regarding the request from ACME. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 I'll drink to that. Um, resolution 34 of 2024 is a resolution regarding, I just had it here. Sure rules and regulations. Sure rules and regulations. And it looks, Amanda, that the biggest part of this is in section five, where there have been some sections added regarding uh, metering and measuring devices for the flow of sewage? Yes, it has to do with the measuring of volume and how that happens. So basically in today's world, we have to modernize our standards as, meter, as meters have modernized. Okay. So that's basically what these standards achieve. Okay, is there a motion uh, to do so? Okay. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Since we're gonna be switching solicitors here, I, I'd like to move to item 36 which requires Mr. Dunn, I guess we're not. They're gonna, they're gonna play musical chairs, that's fine. All right, never mind. I'm trying to make someone's life easier. How about that? Okay, resolution 35 of 2024, Orchard Knoll Final Land Development Plan. Nate, I guess you got something you're gonna show us? Yeah, we have the plan here, Amanda. Yes. It's pulling up the plan. Uh, this plan is essentially the same plan. You guys saw a preliminary plan approval. Uh, I don't really have too much to report, um, but I'll touch base on it briefly. Uh, about a 44, 45 acre parcels, there's three parcels up on, uh, this is off of Mill Road, is left to right on the top of the sheet here on the north side of the site. Britton Lake Road on the left hand side. Access will be from Britton Lake Road. If you get to 21 residential lots on this loop road, there'll be a pendant HOP required for that access to Britton Lake Road. We will have an emergency access, that's on the bottom of this plan, that extends to Evergreen Drive, essentially at the rear of the Costco. Additionally, there is a 22nd lot that is on a private street, Cedar Grove Lane, that is on the right side of your plan here. That is kind of a standalone lot. All of the properties, all 22 lots, will have public water and public sewer. Uh, open space and other amenities are provided. Uh, there's a very robust landscaping plan. Uh, this site has a significant amount of open space and trees being protected. Uh, we have had a, um, their team has had an arborist identify every single tree on the site. The township in a, um, a new addition to our team had an arborist also review that plan uh, to truth check that plan regarding the tree removal. Uh, ultimately, that's probably the biggest change since preliminary plan is we've been able to substantiate that the tree replacement calculations are accurate and no relief is required. Uh, to, to be more specific, there's no relief required at all in this plan. There's no waivers, there's nothing from the zoning hearing board, nothing from the conditional use. Uh, we have prepared uh, with our alternate solicitor, uh, Ernie Angelos, a, a, final plan, a final resolution for approval. Um, it builds off of the preliminary resolution, um, and that is in front of you for a decision tonight. Okay, any questions from any members of council regarding the plan? Uh, yes. Uh, I was concerned about the, the roadway. Are the roads going to be public or private? Did you want to say something, Greg? Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they're, they're going to be private. These will, these will not be public roads. However, oh. we have confirmed that the private roads, once the roads are, um, the wearing course is installed, the school district will access this neighborhood. That was my next question about right. school buses. Uh, <laughs> Greg Edelman here on behalf of the applicant. Good evening. There is or there are going to be some temporary parking spaces along the main access drive until that time that the school district Correct. is able to come onto okay. the property and go through the development. So that way we've accounted for, as your engineer had pointed out, I think in a prior meeting, the potential situation of parents waiting to pick up their kids or drop off their kids, so it won't block that access and as well. Yeah, Brenton Lake Road is a very busy road, especially yeah. with the school bus coming to pick up children, so That's they it. really need to get bus off, off yeah, the road. Yeah, and, and, and that is the ultimate goal, but we understand from the school district they won't do it until we top coat the road. So we wanted to make sure that there's no cars sitting at that intersection yeah. waiting right. for drop off. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Take a stab at a resolution. Resolution 35 of 2020. Ernie, you have anything you want to add? Uh, I do not. I have taken a look at the resolution. There are some uh, 
additional documents by the way of easements and land development agreements that need to be finalized, but they'll be finalized but it's uh, referenced as part of the process. In the resolution, it's referenced that it's subject to the final approval. That, of that is correct. Okay. All right. Resolution 35 of 2024, uh, Nate gave a very good outline of the project and the site, and um, it would be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, all comments contained within the following reviews. Pannoni letter dated October 4th, 2024. These are all attached. HRG letter dated October 14th, 2024. Committee Associates Memorandum dated April 3rd, 2023, last revised, October 3rd, 2024. Fire Marshal's email dated October 2nd, 2024. Delaware County Planning Commission letter dated October 18th, 2024. Number two, developer agrees that all remaining applicable conditions outlined in resolution 27, 2024, regarding the preliminary subdivision and land development approval for the residential development on the reference property, exhibit, exhibit F. Developer number three, developer agrees to enter into a development and improvement security agreement prior to the release of the signed plans. Number four, submission to the township of all required permits and external approvals, including but not limited to the PennDOT HOP, PADEP sewage planning module exemption, and PADEP NPDES permit prior to construction. Number five, plans are to be submitted in electronic format acceptable to the township engineer. Number six, all proposed playground amenities shall be submitted for township review and added to the plan prior to plan recording. Number seven, lighting and landscaping shall be maintained per the recorded plan and replaced in kind as needed. Any substitutions are approval, subject to the approval of the township. Number eight, per note three, Sheet 29, the applicant shall install tree protection construction fencing as indicated on the plan. Fencing must be in place and approved prior to any disturbance. The limit of disturbance shall clearly be marked in the field. All disturbance shall be contained to be delineated limit of construction. Number nine, proposed fencing for lots 10 and 14 shall be relocated to rear lot lines from the track boundary. Number 10, an executed operation and maintenance agreement, as well as a contribution to the Municipal Stormwater Control and BMP Operation and Maintenance Fund is required in the amount of $30,157. Number 11, all necessary and customer deeds, customary deeds, legal descriptions, easements, stormwater maintenance agreements, HOA documents, and or similar, including those regarding Lot 22 Cedar Grove Road, shall be provided for review and approval by the township engineer and the township solicitor prior to the plan recording. Number 12, regarding lot 22, Cedar Grove Drive, applicant is required per resolution number 53, 2010 and 19, 2011 to install public water and sewer. Regarding lot 22, again, Cedar Grove Drive, applicant shall provide clarification and any necessary documentation prior to the plan recording regarding existing proposed maintenance, ownership of the road, stormwater basin, future utilities, and similar. Number 14, temporary parking spaces, three spaces, shall be provided near Britton Lake Road for students until such a time that Garner Valley School District agrees to enter the neighborhood following construction. Number 15, signed sealed surveyor certification of placement of monuments and pins must be filed with the township prior to the recording of the signed plans. Number 20, uh, number 16, note 20 shall be amended to indicate the HOA will be responsible for the ownership and maintenance of all non-dedicated improvements that are commonly owned or controlled by the association. Number 17, prior to construction, engineered design for the proposed retaining walls shall be submitted for peer review by the township engineer ownership, maintenance, responsibilities of the retaining wall shall be clarified and documented prior to final approval by the township engineer. 18, an agreement regarding emergency access shall be provided for review and approval by the township engineer and the township solicitor prior to the plan recording. 19, the legal descriptions for each lot and all new easements are to be submitted for review and approval by the township engineer 
and Township Solicitor prior to release of the sign plans. Number 20, prior to the building permits, the developer shall comply with all requirements and procedures if necessary to have the property removed from the agricultural security area, Exhibit G. Number 21, the portion of the property extending to Mill Road shall be deed restricted from any improvements and maintained by the HOA in good condition. Area shall be an easement for future towns of access utilities, including not limited to trails and sanitary sewer. Do I have a motion to approve resolution number 35 of 2024? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are the conditions acceptable to the applicant? You could have done it from there. <laughs> yes, they are. Okay. Good luck with your project. It's been a long time coming. Okay, next is resolution 36 of 2024, LSA grant application for a sewer project. I guess, Amanda, these come up every now and then, and we're trying to uh, see if we can't get a statewide local share assessment grant of $998,083 from the Commonwealth Financing Authority to put the uh, sewers in for, um, what would that be, Governor Markham area? That is correct. We got an LSA grant earlier in the night that we talked about for sewer, so we're trying again. So we feel lucky, right? Yeah. All right, motion to approve that resolution? I so moved. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.